These are the words that work. These are the words that influence people. The most powerful word in the English language is the word imagine. When you ask people to imagine life at perfection, every one of you has a different dream. Every one of you has a different visualization. And every one of you is correct. Restoring human dignity is brand new. And it's more of a word on this side than it is this side. And I will tell you all, start using it because it's a word that they appreciate because it means something to them. It means genuine respect. By the way, stop with this diversity. I say this to you all. You realize that diversity to you means something completely different to them. This is your lexicon, y'all. It works for everyone. Don't just say things because it sounds good to you. Say things that actually have an impact. I guess my question is, in the, I guess, united effort to fix problems that are currently happening or kind of make the future a better place, how do you make an impact on people that are reluctant to hear what you have to say? And how can you actually have a conversation with people that care more about winning an argument than solving a problem? I'm not going to have an argument with someone who has stopped listening. That's a waste of time. I want to know what your issues are. I want to know what your priorities are. Maybe I'll try to move you. Maybe I won't. But it begins with knowing what's on your mind, really knowing what's in your heart. And if I don't know that, I cannot be effective. You know, for me, it's finding out what their currency is. Even a two-year-old kid, they've got a currency. It may be their little lovey blanket. Everybody has a currency. And if you'll listen, they'll tell you what's urgently relevant to them. Some people talk in feeling terms. And if you'll really see it through their eyes and meet them where they are, then you can really get across. And I learned a long time ago to quit telling people they need help. <laughs> I started telling them what they deserve. And that made a big difference. Well, first of all, thank you both for just engaging in this conversation. I think it's really great that so many people are here and it seems like it's the loudest voices on campus. But I, I, I think about the silent middle. Um, I think about just the people who maybe don't feel comfortable or like confident enough to engage in the space. Sometimes I was just like, why aren't we talking as much policy? Like why, like it, it went to character so fast. And I think this exercise was like really cool in terms of just like being able to look people in the eye and say, I trusted them. But how do we move from a space where we can get more people to engage because that's how change is going to happen. It's not going to keep happening if it's just us. Feel safe. You got to make them feel safe to do it. And that means meeting them where they are instead of asking them to meet you where you are. Or ask them what's important to them. Listen, 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 and bring them along. And you got to be curious and let them know that you really want to understand them. If I want to engage people from the UK, I know that I have to make fun of the US. So the way that I do a focus group is I begin with, tell me the thing you hate most about America. And they feel so bad when they're done trashing America that for the rest of it, they wanna tell me what I'm asking for. Humility goes so much farther than pride. I think it's interesting that a lot of what we talked about has kind of like stemmed from issues of social media, the internet, like that, that seems to be a problem. but. Uh, I'm curious because you talk about how our generation, we have so much information like readily, readily available. We can make friends with anyone on the other side of the world. You talk about cyberbullying. Um, where's the balance? Like how much, how much trust do we really have to put in social media? Or is it, is it more of a problem that, that prevents us from doing things like this? Well, I just finished the 20th season of my show. And when I started it, there wasn't any Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. None of that existed. I think it's a trade-off that I think is coming at a very high price in terms of interpersonal skills. I'm really worried about it. You know, they call it WWW, the World Wide Web. I think it's the wild, wild web. I think the fact that it's so unregulated. And people think, I, I read it on the internet, so it's got to be true. Bullshit. It's not true. People trust the web more than they trust their own doctor. Yeah. That's when you know you got a problem. 
the people who are not vaccinated right now, and it's still more than 20% of America, the number one source of information for them is the web. And 83% of all statistics are made up on the spot. That's right. <laughs> and this was part of the 17%. <laughs> Based on what you have seen here today, do you feel that there's actual hope for bridging that, that gap between us? Do you have hope for our generation? Because I know you don't, but one day I really hope you will. I have more hope because of this conversation. Some of you are bright as hell, and I want you in my class. I'm listening to how you're putting forward your arguments and the stuff that you know. For those of you who sat here and did not participate, I don't know why. Because you're not going to make things better unless you get involved. The tension back and forth is unnecessary. Cut it out for those of you who are participating in it. But I think you're getting a good education. I hope so. And it is such a, it really is a privilege to be able to do this. And you have no idea how great it is to sit next to him. Well, just know I'm more optimistic than he is and know that I'm working on him. And I got to tell you, he's, he's, he's moving a little bit. Like I said, I hear what isn't said. And I think there've been a lot of people that didn't comment that have really been processing a lot of what's going on tonight. And I think the fact that they're here is participating. I really commend those that are here, even if you didn't talk tonight. It, that's a lot of effort to be here on a Friday night. Come listen to a couple of old guys talking. I mean, that's pretty good. So I give everybody credit for being here. And I am optimistic about this generation. I'm more optimistic after tonight than I was before I got here. And I was optimistic before I got here. So thank you all for coming. <laughs>